JLR investigates. New scene, new case. I am in Orlando, Florida. Come on in, everyone. Come on in. We're going to talk about a unsolved case that occurred right here. A while back, 2006. 2006, passing through the area, decided to talk about this case. This is the case of Jennifer Kessie. This is where she possibly got abducted. This is where she lived in the gated community. You guys familiar with this case? I'm on Con, Con, uh, Conroy, Orlando, Florida, near the airport. So the case of Jennifer Jennifer Kessie, Jennifer Joyce Kessie, born in 1981. Missing since January 2006 from this location right here. And then her vehicle was found about a mile down the road. We're gonna go down there in a second. Uh, this is one of those cases I still think about regularly. I love to see her parents get some answers. I saw a lot of flyers on Jennifer at CrimeCon in Orlando. And I heard about the case, so I was reading a little bit. The way I see it is they got still images where her car was left of an individual that was shot in frames and couldn't see his face. It was like a black gate, kind of like here. But we're going to talk about it. Let me spin the camera around and show you where she lived. She lived here. This is a gated community it's called the Mosaic, Mosaic at M-I-L-L-E-N-I-A. Very beautiful here. I mean, it's nice and well kept. Uh, can't go in there. It is a gated community. You have to live here or be invited. Down there. Don't know at the time if it was gated at the time. Assuming it was. Assuming it was. So let's talk about this case, right? Because I got a Wikipedia article. Jennifer Joyce Kessie is an American woman from Orlando, Florida, who has been missing since January 23rd, 2006. Shortly after she vanished, Kessie's car was discovered parked around a mile from her home. And we're gonna go to that location shortly. Security footage recorded a person parking Kessie's car and walking away. The person could not be identified due to poor camera quality and the absence of any visible distinguishing facial features. The case received local and national press attention. It's starting to rain out here. Let me dip in the vehicle. Let me dip in the vehicle so we can further talk. Yeah, you know, the, it, it's man it you know it's landscaping is great here but you're right i don't know the sketchy people walking around i was at the wawa a uh, mile away and it was kind of sketchy to me though i saw orange county sheriffs there it's starting to rain all right so we got jennifer kessie right so what's going on with her case? Born in 1981, uh, January 23rd, 2006, prior events, a graduate of Vivian Gaither High School in Tampa, Florida. Kessie attended the University of Central Florida in Orlando and graduated in 2003 with a degree in finance. At the time she disappeared, she was working as a finance uh, manager at Central Florida Investments Timeshare Company in Ocoee and had recently bought a condominium in Orlando. 
The weekend before she vanished, Cassie vacationed with her boyfriend on St. Croix's Virgin Islands. So a week. I got my uh, flashers on, by the way. You can't really park around here. Uh, after returning on Sunday, she spent the night at her boyfriend's home and then drove straight to work on the morning of Monday, January 23rd, 2006. The disappearance. Cassie was last was seen for the last time leaving work at approximately 6 p.m. here, January 3rd, 2006. She spoke by phone with her father while driving home at around 6.15 and then uh, when her boyfriend at around 10 p.m. Wait, wait, wait. She spoke by phone with her father while driving home at around 6.15 and then with her boyfriend at around 10 p.m. She was in the habit of texting or telephoning her boyfriend before leaving for work. So it was unusual when she did neither the next morning. His call went straight to her voicemail. When Kessie failed to arrive at work, her employer contacted her parents who set out on a two hour drive from their home to hers. Kessie's parents noticed that her car was missing but saw nothing out of the ordinary in her home. A wet towel and clothes laid out, among other things, suggest that she had showered, dressed, and prepared for work that morning. Friends and family distributed flyers about Kessie that evening, and the Orlando Police Department organized search parties on foot and on horseback, as by well as boat, helicopter, car, and ATV. Times. Monday, January 23rd, 2006. Kessie leaves work and calls her parents. This is the last time her family hears from her. She arrives home for the first time since having left for the vacation. 10 p.m., Kessie and her boyfriend talk by phone and say their good night. He's the last known person to speak with her before her disappearance. Tuesday, January 24th, 2006, 7.30 a.m. to 8 a.m., investigators initially believed that Kessie was abducted as she was walking from her front door to her car. They now believe she had left and was abducted at some point on her way to work. Interesting, because the beginning of this, I said maybe she got abducted outside, uh, um, you know, her home. And people still speculate that, by the way. The way I see it. 8 a.m. to 9 a.m., Kessie's boyfriend, who she would normally call but did not, calls her on the way to work, but it goes directly to voicemail. So we're talking 8, 9 a.m. on the 20. Fourth, He chalks it up to a meeting she had mentioned to him. His subsequent attempts are likewise unsuccessful. Kessie's parents call him to say she had failed to show up at work. 11 a.m. Alarmed at Kessie's uncharacteristic no call, no shows. Her employer contacts her parents who begin the drive from Tampa to Orlando. On the way, they call to ask the manager of her condominium to check her home with a spare key. He reports, he reports that everything appears to be normal. And that her car is missing. Where's her car? 12 p.m. Only 1.2 miles away from Kessie's home. Surveillance cameras at an apartment complex record a person parking her car and walking away. The car and footage are not discovered until two days later. 3 p.m. Kessie's parents and brother arrive at her apartment. They find evidence that she had been home that morning. They call the police as Kessie is an adult. Police initially hold that she may have left on her own. 5 p.m., 7 p.m., friends and family saturate the area with flyers. The police sent a detective to her home and began interrogations and searches. January 26, seeing Cassie's car on the news, a tenant of a nearby complex informs the police that it has set that has sat abandoned in front of their apartment for several days. Police confirm it is Cassie's 2004 Chevy Malibu. The vehicle is photographed and taken for forensic examination. Police examined local surveillance footage and discovered an unidentified person parking her car and driving away. You guys want to go to the location? We're going to go to where her car is, where her car was found. So we are going to do that right now. Let's go see. So this is, uh, you know, where she lived. Let me put my seatbelt on. We're going to go for a drive to bring awareness to this case. This is a long time ago, folks. This is a long time ago. It's only a mile and a quarter away from here. We are 
So did she get abducted after leaving? Nearby, there's some businesses nearby up here. I saw Burger King, I saw CVS, I saw McDonald's. Hard to turn because there's no traffic lights and the traffic is coming. And you're right, the, the, the area has grown so much since then. Who knows what was here, really here back then. You guys know. going to that location. Scambler, Huntington does not have a website, may be closed today. So this is John Young and uh, Conroy. Got a Walgreens. Definitely a busy intersection. CVS and a Walgreens. I don't know if they were here then. Now they have surveillance. On the lights. Don't know if they had lights back then. A long time ago. About 17 years ago. 17 years ago, people. We're 0.7 miles away. We're just waiting for the uh, light to turn. Kind of give you a view of the Orlando area. What happened to Jennifer? Born in 1981. So what, she'd be about 40 years old? Or no, wait, 81? Nothing, 342? It's only a mile and a quarter from where her home, or from the apartment to where a car was dropped off. It's, I mean, What's going on in this general area? Christine Riley, 42. Yeah, born in 81. She'd be 42. All right, we are off. Big shopping center over there. Publix. Condos. Don't know if they were here then. In a quarter mile, turn left onto South Texas Avenue. Who says up here, turn at South Texas Avenue or Texas Avenue? So up here, there's a lot of shopping centers. American, Americana Plaza. And a Metro, Mobile. Turn right, then turn left. Oh wow, it's not, this, 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 it's not even here anymore. That was it. In 800 feet, turn right onto Honor Road. Ah. So the apartment complex is not there anymore. Correct me if I'm wrong. Turn right onto Downing So we talking Street. about a Turn left, then turn left. Because according to addresses it's here. Ah.
said I'm in the hood. So what's yeah it's very um looks like the apartment complexes were here is it still there am i in the wrong place according to map here Looks like it's right there. So where's Jennifer? What happened? Let me read your comments. If I remember correctly, I thought she got a brand new condo back then, or maybe they were building new around her. She was excited to have her condo. So freaking sad. What a waste. Yeah. So, I think her, uh, according to Fox 35, I'm going to read a report here from Fox 35, uh, disappearance 17 years later, family says they have new leads in Orlando cold case. Uh, so Tuesday marked 17 years since Jennifer Kessie disappeared in Orlando. 17 heart-shaped balloons were left at the mosaic at uh, Molina. Milena, M-I-L-L-E-N-I-A complex, the place that we were just at. Where Kessie was last seen January 24th, 2006. The 24-year-old vanished without a trace. No one has been arrested. Her family tells Fox 35 that they have new leads in the case. Drew Kessie, Jennifer's father, says the Florida Department of Law Enforcement is working on the case with the family's investigators. After spending over $80,000 on case files from the Orlando Police Department, Kessie says they're getting new leads. Orlando Police initially investigated the case, but the family was not happy with how it was handled. Kessie says the department botched the investigation from the moment an officer was sent out when calls were first made about her disappearance. There's some flowers. We were just there. Well, I couldn't get in, but it was gated community. Tuesday marked 17 years since Jennifer Kessie disappeared in Orlando. 17 heart-shaped balloons were left at the complex. She vanished without a trace. We went up to the combo and the condo and they sent an officer out. Officer came in, looked around for about 30 seconds and said, she probably had a fight with her boyfriend. She'll be back. And he walked out. The Kessie family and Orlando police reached an agreement outside of court. So what does that mean? Her father says he'll never give up looking for his daughter. Jennifer Joyce Kessie has been missing since January 2006. She's our flesh and blood. We created her, father said, told Fox 35. How sad, right? We created her out of the joy and out of love. We raised her, nurtured her, educated her. She's our love child. How do you walk away from that? We can't. I can't. I never will. And I think she knows that. Kessie says January 24th is an actual day Jennifer was reported missing. In 2006, she chatted on the phone with her parents and boyfriend from outside her Orlando home before disappearing, stumping investigators and the young woman's family who have searched relentlessly for her from Florida to Mexico to Russia. There's Jennifer. Does someone in this area know what happened to Jennifer? Evidence photos obtained by Fox News suggest a violent struggle took place on the front hood of the 24-year-old woman's car. A clue the family hopes will yield new leads in a case that has long been unsolved. Looks like someone was thrown down on top of the hood, arms spread out, and then dragged back almost like off the hood to the point where you can almost see fingers scribbling down the hood, the father said. The photos look suspicious and show what appears to be hand mark going across the hood. Added Mike Toretta, a former federal agent and private investigator hired by the Kessie family. The 
person of interest believed to be male and dressed in workman's clothes has never been identified. Yeah, that's pretty sad. Uh, Kaylee, uh, Kayla says, and the surveillance video took still shots every few seconds. The man's face is blocked each time. Yeah. Uh, one news outlet said that was, that person that was like those multiple still shots was the luckiest person on this plane. I mean, how lucky can you be for your face to be blocked by those metal bars to each each frame, right? So it happened in this area. So, you know, passing through, bringing awareness. I'll redo this uh, video. I'll put I'll put her face on the thumbnail. Here, I'll show her face again. Give me one second. This is Jennifer. She's 24. She went missing. If you have any credible information about this case, contact authorities wherever you're at or contact uh, is this orange county i'm assuming this is orange county Orlando police orange county sheriffs contact the fbi this was the uh this is the photograph people were talking about the luckiest man still shot dropping off the vehicle somewhere around here a mile and a half must have been the luckiest guy ever To not be able to have his face fully seen. All right, all. I'm JLR Investigates out in Orlando, Florida. Jennifer Kessie, praying for her family. Uh, if you have, if you want to share anything with me in reference to this case, you want to talk, email me JLR at JLR Investigates. We'll bring awareness to this case. We'll help try to make a difference. Try to help this family any way we can. We'll talk soon. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Have a great day. Justice for Jennifer and her uh, family.